Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the leak code question, array nesting. All right, so this question is actually pretty interesting because to actually solve it, there is a pattern that you have to observe. So what I want to do with this question is to kind of show you how you can actually come and see the pro uh, pattern and actually make that observation and eventually solve the question using that. So real quickly, this question, uh, we're going to be given an integer array nums of length n, where nums is a permutation of numbers in the range 0, comma, n minus 1. So let's say over here we're given these nums. Um, and essentially what it's telling us is that uh, the length of this is 7. So the range of numbers is going to be from 0 to 7 minus 1, which is, well, 6. And obviously the 0 and 6 are uh, inclusive in the range. So in this, we're going to get a random permutation with these values. And what that basically means is let's say we had the values 0 and 1. So one of the permutations would be 0, 1. And the other one would be 1, 0. So essentially, if something has a length of 8, you would get one of the permutations with the number 0 all the way up to 7 because 8 minus 1. So that's going to be our input. So now the goal with this is that we want to make a set called S of K, where K is going to be an index value. And the set, the way it works is that the first element is going to be nums K. The next element is going to be nums at the index nums K. Then we're going to have nums at the index nums nums K. Okay. So in simpler words, uh, what that basically says is that at S K, so let's say at S zero, we are first going to have a number at nums K. That's going to be nums zero. Then, the next value is going to be nums at whatever this value is, so at this index. Then this over here is going to be nums at this index over here. Okay, so that's basically what these two are saying over here. And we stop adding right before a duplicate element occurs in SK. So essentially, a, a set cannot have to, uh, repetition of elements. So every time there's a duplicate, we stop. Okay, so the goal is to return the longest path of set SK. So before that, let me actually go over this part and show you how we can build that set. So just to make it easier on us, what we're going to do is we're going to write out, so nums at the zeroth index has a value of 5, okay? So nums at the first index has a value of 4. So let me just fill this out uh, completely. So at the second index, 0. At the third index, we have a value of 3. At the fourth index, we have a value of 1. At the fifth index, we have a value of 6. And finally, at the sixth index, we have a value of 2. Cool. So we have this over here. So whatever is at a certain index and the value at that corresponding index. Cool. So now what we want to do is how do we create a set SK? Okay. So let's say we want to make the set S with K uh, having a value of 0. So S0. And the way we're actually going to do this is the first thing we do is we go to nums 0, because k is 0 in this case. And that is a value of 5. So the first value is going to be 5. Cool. So now the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to the index 5. So at the fifth index, we have the number 6. So that's what we write. Now we go to the sixth index for this value over here. So the sixth index is the number 2. Cool. Now we go to the second index. So the second index has a value of 0, and the 0th index has a value of 5. But now notice, 5 already exists, so we cannot add 5 again. So that's it. That's going to be our set when k is equal to 0, 5, 6, 2, 0, and this has a length of 4. Cool. So now one thing that we could do is we could kind of store this somewhere and look at this for all the k possible values and form all these sets and just find out which one has the largest length. So obviously that is a brute force approach. It could, it would work, but it is a brute force approach. We want to look at a better solution. So this is where the pattern I was talking about comes into play. So basically how I found it in the beginning is what I did is I took the K value. So what are the possible K values? In this case, the possible K values are zero all the way up to six. And for each of them, I wrote the corresponding set. So S K. And when you do that, you actually find a very interesting pattern. And that's what I want to show you and explain to you how that comes along. So let me just write that down. All right. So now at k is equal to zero, we've already found out the set. And the set was 
5, 6, 2, 0. Cool. So I'm going to fill this out for everything, but I'll just do it a little bit quickly. So at 1, we are going to have 4. And the reason is 4. So we go to the index 1, which has a value of 4. Then we go to the index 4, which has a value of 1. Now we go to the index 1, and that has a value of 4, obviously. And 4 already exists, so we can't write that again. So cool. We have this as it is. So now we go to 2. And at 2, it's going to be 0, 5, 6, 2. So I already have them written down, so I'm just going to fill it up quickly. And at 3, it's just going to be the value 3. And let's just look at that. So first we go to the index 3 that has a value of 3. Then again, we go to the index 3, and obviously the value is still 3, and we cannot add duplicates. So cool. So now at 4, our set is going to be 1, 4. And at 5, it's going to be 6, 2, 0, 5. And finally, at 6, we're going to have 2, 0, 5, 6. OK, so now this is where our observation comes into play. Let's look at kind of all the sets that we have. So all of these are a length of 4. Uh, these are a length of 2. And this has a single length of 1. Now, when you let's just take a look at everything with a length of 4 specifically. Now, the numbers here are 5, 6, 2, and 0. Cool. And over here, we see the same numbers, 5, 6, 2, 0. They're in a different order, but it's still 5, 6, 2, 0. And one thing to notice is it's still in that same kind of order. OK, so what I meant is uh, the first number here is 0, but still, it's kind of shifted over. So this is 5, 6, 2, 0. And you could read this as 5, 6, 2, and then 0, right? And over here, we have the same thing, 5, and then 6, 2, 0. And I'll, I'll highlight the 5 again, 5, and then 6, 2, 0. So the numbers here are the same. So the question here is, why exactly is this? All of these have the exact same numbers, but their starting points are different. So 5, 0, 6, and 2. They start at different values, but they have the same numbers. So why exactly is that? Now, the explanation for this is pretty simple. And that's because we kind of have a cycle. And I think this is best explained when I kind of draw it out. So 5 points to 6, 6 points to 2, and 2 points to 0, and 0 points to 5. And let's just actually confirm this. So at the 0th index, we have a value of 5. Correct. At the 5th index, we have a value of 6. At the 6th index, we have a value of 2. And at the 2nd index, we have a value of 0. And again, 0 points to 5, 5 points to 6. And it's just an ongoing, never-ending cycle. So realistically, what's happening over here, when we're looking at these k different possibilities, we are going at the same cycle, except we're just starting at different places. So my the basic thing that we need to get out of this is that we could have several of these cycles. And once we visited one of the starting points, so let's say when we visit the one which starts with 5, there's no point of visiting the other ones because all we care about is what is the length going to be. And in this case, we know the length is 4. Whether you start from 4 or 6 or 0, no matter where you start from, the length is always going to be 4. So this is the idea that we want to implement. And now let me show you how we're going to implement the fact that once we've entered one of these circles, we do not want to ever enter it again. And the way we're going to do this is, uh, let me just take k is equal to 0 as an example. So in this case, first we go to 5, then we go to 6, and then 2, and then 0. Now, what we're going to do is, at each time once we visited it, so in this case, uh, we would actually store the length, right, which is 4. We calculate the length is 4, and we stop. But now at this point, what we're going to do is, each time, we make these numbers negative 1. So once we visited them, we make it negative 1. And the reason I'm saying negative 1 is we just want some sort of way to kind of mark that we have visited this number. And the reason I said negative 1 specifically is because the range of numbers is just going to be from 0 up to the length of nums. So negative 1 is not going to be in that range ever. So that's just kind of a marker number I'm using. So in this case, when it's a negative 1, that means I have already visited so now let's see how this could actually be important. So now let's say I go to k is equal to 2. So the first thing I do is I go to the second index, which has a value of 0. Now when I go to 0, what's basically happening is at the second index, I have a value negative 1. And what that's telling me is that, look, I've already been to the circle with the numbers 5, 6, 2, and 0. Now when I visit the circle, I'm going to be getting the same exact circle values, which are 0, 5, 6, and 2. So the length is going to be the same. So 
So at this point, there is no need of visiting it. And then I'm not going to do anything. So since, so that automatically tells me in the beginning, I've already visited the circle. There's no point of visiting it again. So this is going to just basically have a length of zero because its previous length, which was four, has been accounted for once and that's enough. So let's see what that looks like when k is equal to one. So at k is equal to one, we uh, so we go to the first index, which has a value of four, and then we go to one over here. Now, both of these don't have negative one. So this is the new loop that is formed. And these two are also going to have, now going to have a value of negative one. So in this case, now we have a length of two. But now again, what happens when we go to k is equal to four, the second we go to the fourth index, which has a value of one, over here at the fourth index, it has a value of negative one, not one, right? So that means we've already visited that cycle, right? So this the cycle has the numbers four and one, and in this case, the starting point is one instead of four. So we don't, so this also, we don't need to check for that cycle. So it also has a value of zero, okay? So in simple words, once we visited the cycle, visit a certain cycle, we take that length and we never visit that cycle again. So keeping that in mind, this three over here is actually not visited yet. So now we visit it and it has a value of negative one and it has a length of one. So now when we go to k is equal to five, well, this cycle with six has a value of negative one. It's already been visited. So we're gonna give it zero. And over here, this cycle has also been visited. So it gets zero. So realistically, the value that we end up uh, returning is going to be the maximum value between all of these lengths which in this case is going to be four. So four is the value we end up returning. So hopefully you understood this and let me just sum it up real quickly. We know that there is some sort of cycle and once we've entered one of these cycles, there is no point of entering another cycle because the only difference is going to be the start point and the lengths are going to be the same. So in that case, we mark it, we're using a marker, which in this case is negative one. And when that is there, we're not going to detect that cycle anymore. So let's see how this looks like in code. And I think it should give you a better understanding. All right, so we're gonna start off by initializing our uh, result. And this result is what is gonna have the maximum length, right? So in this case, that was the four. And this is what it's gonna basically store. So let's initialize it with a value of zero. And now we need to get the k values. And this is gonna be for k in range length of nums. So this gives us all the k values from zero to n minus one. Okay, perfect. So now we need to find the current length of the set that we're currently building. So set k, we wanna find its current length. And we're gonna initialize it with zero. Now, the first thing we do is the number we go to is gonna be nums at the index k. Now, the first thing we gotta look for is have we already visited this cycle? And the way we do that is if it's equal to negative one. So if it is equal to negative one, we do not do anything. So the condition here is while nums k is not equal to negative one, then in that case, we're gonna look at the uh, other possible values and check the new cycle out. Okay, now the first thing we gotta do is we gotta increment our current length since it's going to increment by one over here. So we uh, add it by one. And now what we're gonna do is we gotta change, so currently uh, k has a certain value, but we gotta change that value to k to the new index, right? To the index nums k. And the way we do that is we just give k is equal to nums k. Perfect. Now, another thing we got to do is we got to change the value of nums k to negative one. But one problem by doing this, the nums k is equal to negative one, we change the value of k over here. So what we're going to do is a simple fix is we're going to store the value of k in a temporary variable before changing its value to nums k and change that value to negative one. Perfect. So that's what we're doing. And that's it for our y loop. So by the end of this, all of the numbers should have become negative one and meaning we've explored all of the possible cycles and while doing so, we're finding the um, current length. So the final thing we gotta do outside of this while loop is we gotta uh, change, we gotta keep updating the value of result so we only have the largest value. So the way we do that is pretty simple. So result is gonna be the uh, maximum between the current result that we're currently having and the current length that we found for uh, the set at the value k, whatever the value k is. And now outside of this, well, all we have to do is we gotta return the value of our result. So submit this. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So real quickly, the time complexity here is going to be big O of n because over here, we're going through, uh, so the, all the possible k values are basically from zero up to n minus one. So 
So big O of n is the time complexity, and the space complexity here is actually going to be constant space. Because whatever we're changing, so when we're changing it to negative 1, we're changing the nums list itself, right? We're not changing anything else. So it's going to be constant space in this case. So that should be it, and, and hopefully this video did help you, and do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you